Any further debate? Mr. The Speaker, I'm sure you observed yourself that from what I read and what you read as my motion, there is a disparity. And this is because the administration Order. attempted to make their own motion and change the wording of my motion, which I dis detest great greatly. I would like to advise that going into the future, members of parliament must be allowed the freedom to express themselves in the manner that is respectful and means uh, what they, they stand for. I wanted to put that on record that there was an attempt, and I was told that the, 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 the administration attempted to change the wording of my motion. I detest that. Point of order, Mr. Speaker. Sir, this is my Point motion. Point of order, Mr. Speaker. Honorable member, uh, Honorable Ngoluve, take your seat. Honorable Gary Nkombo, uh, take your seat. Honorable, this is your motion. You may surprise you, you may surprise the listeners and the honorable members in the house because you started talking even before I could give you a chance. And definitely nobody would have stood to speak but you yourself. I know you had that in mind, that you say it. But you have said it rather <laughs> at a time when I did not even uh, grant you the opportunity to speak. I wish to call you now to speak. Accept my apologies, Mr. Speaker. I am very unhappy, Member of Parliament, as I speak to you now and uh, to the members. Mr. Speaker, in his ruling, the Speaker of the National Assembly of Zambia, Dr. Patrick Matibini, also referred to me as a busybody. A busybody, Mr. Speaker, by definition of the English Oxford Dictionary, is someone who gossips constantly. I don't. Someone who talks about people and spreads rumors. I do not. Someone who's excessively interested in persons' private affairs or is too inquisitive. I am not. And someone who is meddling or praying in persons' affairs. I do not. And finally, a mischief maker. I don't make mischief. Mr. Speaker, my humble view is that this amounted to name calling. It was derogatory, demeaning by one colleague to another, and by extension to the people of Mazabuka constituency who voted for me to represent them. They are too very unhappy for me to be called a busybody. I must say I owe the gratitude to the Committee of Privileges, Absences, and Support Services, including some in that committee who initially did not agree that members' rights should be protected by Cap 12 of the laws of Zambia, which gives immunities to members of parliament to debate freely, to discharge their responsibility according to their conscience. And in this case, I also thank God because the members, who include some from the Patriotic Front, did not put themselves on record as having been against the upholding of this motion because then they would have been accomplices in the act of trying to mutilate M Mr. Speaker, the I same have been law rising on the point of order. Of Zambia. This is the third time, sir. I'm trying to rise on a point of order and I'm not being recognized. I think it's only fair, Mr. Speaker, that the rights, my rights to rise on a point of order are equally respected. I have, in the first place, I've not permitted you to speak. Uh, 
there are also other points of order indicated and i'm looking at the 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 list so um i'm following the debate from honorable Nkombo. Uh, i may consider that later for now let him continue he can debate after i finish if he wants i was saying that i'm pleased by the members some of whom are from the patriotic front who, after the deliberations of the committee, did, decided not to place themselves on record as part of those who were against the motion in order to diminish the act of protecting members of parliament in their discharge of their duties under a free will. I thank Honorable Luwinda. I thank uh, Honorable Mundubile, who were part and parcel of, of this, this committee. A, 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 point point of of order. Order, a point of order is raised. Sir. Uh, I stand on a very, very serious procedural point of order. And as a matter of fact, there are two that I'd like you to rule on. First is whether the motion on the floor is competently in, before us. Given the fact that the mover of the motion in his preamble opposes the motion and says this is not his motion. This motion is from the administration. Now, having distanced himself from the motion and claiming it is not his motion, is in order to proceed to argue it. Secondly, no. sir, it is procedural and there is nowhere in the standing orders where a person cannot move two points of order. Nowhere. After 20 years in this house, we should know that. My point of order, my second point of order is whether the move of the motion is in order to start singling out members of the Privileges Committee and to claim, as he is doing, that all members of that committee are in agreement with the decision that was communicated. And he personally mentions my name. And yet he was not sitting in that meeting. And he's not privy to what happened in that meeting. Is he in order, therefore, to insinuate that the Minister of Justice, who sits on that committee in his capacity as Minister of Justice, is an accomplice to this matter? I seek your serious ruling on this. I thank you, sir. My ruling. The, to start with, I listened to a member of parliament who is debating, Honorable Nkombo, that he stated there that there was an attempt to change the, the motion he drafted. He did not say it's not his motion. If it was not his motion, he would have not come here to present it or move it. Talking about whether others agreed or not in the committee, I think it must be noted that uh, when members are attending a meeting in a situation like the one they had, there could be some who may not support what is being discussed. But when it passes through, they may not have the choice but to consider to be part of the decision. And in any case, this is the more reason why it has now moved to the main house, where both sides, those on my left and those uh, on my right, are going to debate. Some of those 
complaints which are coming through points of order may be discussed or rather debated when time comes for us to debate the same motion. For now, Honorable Minister, take a seat. For now, we we'll allow the mover to continue and thereafter we allow other members to also debate. Honorable member. Clearly, Mr. Speaker, there was no one in the committee who put themselves on record to say that they did not agree with the collective decision. And for that, I congratulate them wholeheartedly. Thank you very much. Undoubtedly, the committee saw merit in the quest to challenge the Speaker's decision because the Speaker's ruling, Mr. Speaker, worldwide, constitutes precedents which are subsequent speakers, members, and officers are guided by those precedences. They are a very important source of determining how business of the House should be conducted. The rulings bring out an aspect of cognitive bias, this particular ruling that I'm, changed, I'm challenging, and seeks to rewrite, the, denigrate the norms of justice and fairness where what is good for the goose is no longer good for the gander. Any presiding officer, Mr. Speaker, must treat suspected offenders without discrimination, meaning if I offend against the rules of parliament and I'm a member of UPND and a member of PF offends the same rules, the punishment that is due to be discharged should be on all fours. It should be the same. This is not the case in this particular matter. And if the House does not allow this particular ruling, the Speaker risks being labeled partisan. And this is the reason why he was wise to leave the chair, to retreat. And I'm sure that in his heart of hearts, he will be the happiest to annul this decision because even he himself knows that this particular ruling was not only wrong, it was illegal. Mr. Mr. Speaker, it was I illegal. Know I, I have really struggled to keep my peace, rules. but I have okay. another point of order. Order, to order, order, Honorable Member. Uh, take your seat, Honorable. <laughs> Take your seat, Honorable Tutu. Honorable, are you trying to raise a point of order? Yes, Mr. Speaker, and I think it's the fourth time I'm rising to rise on a point of order. And you told me you get back to me later, yet you allowed the minister to rise on his point of order. I'm still waiting. And the member on the floor continues violating the rules of this house. He will finish his 10 minutes, and at what point am I going to, ra to, to, rise, uh, to raise my point of order? I've, I think it's very clear, Mr. Speaker. I've gotten you. Uh, take your seat. Yes, I allowed, I allowed Honorable Winda because he was mentioned. And that was the reason why I allowed him. And when you say he is going to finish is 10 minutes. I think I guided the Honorable Tutuang group that when I look at my list, I'm seeing your name that instead of you maybe raising a point of order in two minutes or one minute, you'll be given five minutes to debate. You will, as long as the rules of the house uh, is followed. There will be no problem. You have all the rights to debate. You will. I guide it. I'm also listening to the honorable member who is debating. Surely, if I find that is off the motion, I will be able to tell and I will guide. Honorable member, you may continue. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. 
Mr. Speaker, in my point of order, I adduced evidence how our former Secretary General of UPND, Mr. Stephen Katuka, was summoned by Parliament to come and ex exonerate, exculpate himself for issuing what was termed by a concocted newspaper cutting from the Zambia Daily Mail as a threat to our erstwhile colleagues, Honorable Geoffrey Lungwangwa and Honorable T.J. Kasonso, on their stand on the same crestfallen Bill 10. This was a concocted story by the Zambia Daily Mail. Mr. Katuka was clear of that allegation, and yet he was summoned by this parliament to come and answer to charges. On the other hand, Mr. Davis Simwila, the current Patriotic Front Secretary General, under his hand signed a letter to threaten three members of parliament here, and yet the speaker says this is an internal matter which must be dealt with by PF themselves. Obviously, that tells a long story. It also gives an impression that if these public matters are not dealt with prudently, we are going to dent this chair, this seat. It is at the center of this chamber, Mr. Speaker, because any ruling should reflect someone who is sitting at the center. And there should be no reason why a speaker must allow themselves to be misunderstood by giving a judgment or a ruling which is clearly defective and fault. Mr. Speaker, my conscience tells me that the Honorable Mr. Speaker is a member of parliament. And anyone who offends, as the case may be now, must account for that offense. Many of us have offended here. Many. We have stood behind that bar there and admonished. How I wish the speaker could be brought there so that he can be admonished as well. Order. Order. In, in, it is my wish. Order. My order. Wish. Order. Honorable Nkombo. Honorable Nkombo, we need to be fair. I think you can see how the speaker has accommodated this motion to the extent that he has even left the, the house so that people are free. I'm free. To even debate. if I seated here, I would have said the same. I'm a free man. And in any case, you were answering order, you were order, talking. order, okay, order. Order, order, Honorable Nkombo. They were Kombo. answering you when they Honorable the floor. Kombo, take your seat just a minute. Take your seat. This motion is going to put to a rest. Whether we like it or not, both sides you are going to debate. Just to bring out the points. There is no need of pointing fingers at each other. It is not necessary. And you see, sometimes we, 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 we tolerate certain things not because we are not seeing the mistakes that we observe in some of you members of parliament. So now you can see that you are accusing yourselves to say, you are talking. This is what we avoid. There are rules in this house. Honorable member, continue. If wishes were horses, Mr. Speaker, beggars would ride them. My wish would be for the Speaker to be made to stand there so that he can account. That is just my wish. My wish is also that the Patriotic Front SG should immediately be brought before the Privileges Committee just the way Mr. Katuka was brought before the Privileges Committee to answer to these charges of interfering with the work of a member of parliament. This is a simple request. The, the country is listening. There's no one who is uh, immune to making mistakes. But even when a mistake is made, people must account. People must account. In normal jurisdictions, Mr. Speaker, a mistake like this one, let's call it a mistake, would call for a moral duty to resign from a position of being a speaker. 
You can say that because you don't live in an, an ideal society. If I were the speaker and I make such a mistake, I would resign. That's what I'm talking about. But here we are just asking for the barest minimum that Mr. Davis Mwila must be brought before the Privileges Committee to answer for why he was issuing threats. At this juncture, Mr. Speaker, I want to search the soul and the, the mind of all members of parliament that this is not their motion. It is for the next generation. And if we leave this as a precedent, tomorrow your children who will be MPs are going to be admonished for performing their duties as members of parliament against the, the, against the dictates of Cap 12 of the laws of Zambia. Thank you for allowing this motion to see the light of day, and I beg to move. Thank you. Yeah.